Ashley, good morning from Mission Control Houston and welcome to our live coverage of the rendezvous and grapple of SpaceX's Dragon here on Wednesday, April 4th, 2018. As you can see in the screens in Mission Control and soon in the video feeds right to your screen, Dragon already closing in quickly on the International Space Station, already less than 150 meters away. Here inside the room, the Orbit 1 team sitting on console, monitoring all the systems on board the space station and getting ready for Dragon's arrival. Leading the team right now is Flight Director Rick Henfling. He's the gentleman in the jacket there. And then just above him, is a voice you'll be hearing quite a bit this morning. That's Andreas Mogensen from uh, the European Space Agency, representing the country of Denmark uh, for the European Space Agency. He's going to be the Capcom this morning, and he's going to be talking with the crew on board. And that crew, uh, Expedition 55, is standing by and ready to capture the Dragon once it arrives. It's running about 20 minutes ahead of schedule right now, so we should get to that a little bit quicker this morning than anticipated. Some of the key players for this morning, uh, working inside of the station's cupola module, uh, manning the robotics workstation, Japanese astronaut Norishige Kanai. He's going to be prime for all of the robotic operations this morning, controlling the robotic arm to reach out and snag Dragon once it arrives at that capture point. Backing him up, and a voice you'll probably hear on the loops quite a bit, is NASA astronaut Scott Tingle. Uh, He's going to be talking with the ground and uh, again backing up Kanai uh, for this capture. Also inside uh, the cupola this morning, NASA astronaut Ricky Arnold also monitoring and providing any support as needed. As mentioned though, Dragon quickly closing in. It's less than 150 meters away and we'll continue to get updates from the crew uh, as they call out the various milestones as Dragon approaches. Its next built-in hold will be when it's just 30 meters away from space station, at which point it'll stop, execute a couple of uh, safety checks, essentially, and then get the go to proceed. It'll eventually arrive um, at that 30-meter hold and then proceed. And as mentioned, we are about 20 minutes ahead of schedule, so uh, the, it's expected uh, to get to that 30-meter point in about 15 minutes or so. And uh, once it uh, gets there, it'll depart uh, shortly after. Once everything's ready, the actual capture window uh, will open up at 5.16 uh, a.m. Central Time this morning, 6.16 over on the East Coast. And then once it gets to that capture point targeted to be around 524 AM here in Houston, uh, 624 again over on the East Coast, uh, the crew will get the go for capture. And then again, uh, Norishige Kanai is going to be uh, the prime at the robotics controls this morning. He's in that cupola module watching Dragon on its final approach. The vehicle, which is delivering cargo for SpaceX's 14th contracted resupply mission with uh, with NASA, is packed with over 5,800 pounds of cargo, and that's split across uh, the pressurized section, so everything inside of the capsule, and also some large unpressurized payloads found down in the trunk. Breaking it down real quick, over 750 pounds of crew supplies, food, clothes, uh, other items for the crew's daily use. And then uh, the bulk of the cargo on board, over 2,300 pounds of science investigations. And we'll run through a little bit of those a little bit later in our broadcast today. Also delivering over 200 pounds of spacewalking equipment, 326 pounds of vehicle hardware, spare parts, and other items for the space station. 108 pounds of computer resources, including a new printer for the crew on board, and then 24 pounds of Russian hardware. And then in Dragon's trunk, over 2,000 pounds of unpressurized payload, that being taken up by two new science experiments, uh, the Missy FF, uh, testing materials in space, and also uh, the ASIM, the Atmosphere Space Interactions Monitor, uh, colloquially known as the Space Storm Hunter. Uh, that's a payload uh, also from Denmark, uh, or with uh, some leads uh, on the payload from Denmark, uh, the payload from the European Space Agency that's going to be mounted outside of the Columbus module on the International Space Station. And again, we'll go into details of all those in a little bit. 
For now, though, continuing to get some great views of Dragon from the external cameras on the International Space Station. You're going to see Dragon get bigger and bigger in your field of view as it approaches the International Space Station. Again, the next major mark we're looking for is when it arrives at that 30-meter point, uh, which should come at about uh, 4.47 a.m. Central Time, so in just about 12 minutes from now. Just a few minutes ago, we actually could see the Earth's surface beneath as everything looks black now. Uh, they're actually in an orbital nighttime. Uh, sunrise, though, should come at about 5.14 a.m. Central Time, 6.14 a.m. Eastern, and shed some new light on Dragon while it uh, reaches those final approach points. So as mentioned, there's two crew members prime really at the robotics. Um, the lead for this morning is Norishige Kanai from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. He's going to be at the controls for the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm, reaching out uh, with the arm to capture Dragon once it's within range. He's being backed up today by NASA astronaut Scott Tingle. You'll hear Scott's voice quite a bit on the loops today on the space to grounds, the voice going from the space station down here to Mission Control Houston. Uh, you'll, you might hear Kanai referred to as Nemo and Tingle referred to as Maker, both of their call signs. And again, uh, NASA astronaut Ricky Arnold also inside the cupola this morning uh, to provide backup support for this capture activity. And they'll be using the robotic arm to reach out and capture Dragon once it's at that capture point in a free drift mode. And then once they ensure a good grapple, they'll be done for the next couple of hours uh, where control will get handed down here to the ground where robotics controllers will then uh, remotely maneuver the arm uh, to put Dragon into its uh, berthing attitude. It's going to be attached to the Earth-facing uh, port of the Harmony module, also known as Node 2, and then ultimately uh, attached and bolted in place. This is actually this Dragon capsule's second visit to the International Space Station. It was previously used on the company's eighth resupply mission back in May of 2016. UOP-1. Copy, thanks. And again, just to run down uh, some of the rough milestones, these are rough times at this point as we are ahead of our timeline, but again, we're expected to get it about 30 meters away at 4.47 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the earliest go for the capture um, will actually uh, be uh, a little after 5 a.m. Central, but then it'll depart that 30-meter point at about 5.07 a.m. Central, arriving at the capture point at about 5.24. Uh, the crew will get the, the final go to go ahead and capture with the robotic arm at about 5.32. The capture targeted to come at about 5.40 a.m. Central Time this morning. And there's a capture window, so even if they don't get it right at 5.40, uh, they actually have all the way until about uh, 6.32 um, for that capture to take place. Um, if they aren't able to get it during the prime window, as this is known, um, there's always a backup window, uh, one more rev or one more orbit around the Earth later. You can see things starting to get dark now as they are in an orbital nighttime. The space station and Dragon currently orbiting about 255 statute miles over the northern Pacific, and they're going to continue on this southeasterly track. They're going to swing just to the north of Hawaii, actually, 
uh, things will start to look a little bit better once sunrise takes place, and that'll be at about 5.14 a.m. Central, 6.14 a.m. Eastern. Thank you. And this is actually a view of the monitor inside of the cupola uh, that uh, those crew members from Expedition 5 are monitoring Kanai, the prime for capture this morning as Scott Tingle backing him up. Uh, you can see this monitor, you can see Dragon right in the center of that box essentially as it's continuing to approach. Um, they're, they're getting active data from the spacecraft as it approaches the International Space Station. Again, conversing with the team here in Mission Control Houston uh, ESA astronaut Andreas Mogensen at the Capcom position today. And then all of the interaction between them also uh, looping in the team out in Hawthorne, uh, the, the SpaceX flight control team who have been overseeing Dragon's flight to the International Space Station since it, its successful launch back on Monday. The Dragon spacecraft continuing to approach. Again, we're looking for that 30 meter hold point uh, that we should get there in about five minutes or so. An onboard Dragon, over 5,800 pounds of cargo, about 2,300 of that, uh, science experiments, and then over 2,000 of that coming in the form of external payloads. And those will be in the trunk version, the lower portion of Dragon that has the solar arrays directly attached. And those will also get some robotic interaction uh, once Dragon is ultimately attached to the International Space Station. Uh, the robotic arm will be used to extract those two payloads. Uh, those two payloads in the trunk, the first uh, known as Missy FF. It's the Materials ISS Experiment Flight Facility. Uh, and this is a new flight facility designed by Alpha Space that's going to be available for private, private sector use uh, through the U.S. National Lab, uh, the International Space Station, a national laboratory uh, of which managed by CASIS allows uh, companies, academia, other government organizations to fly research experiments to the International Space Station to take advantage of that microgravity laboratory uh, and Alpha Space's MISI facility uh, going to allow for some materials testing and technical demonstrations on board the station. Uh, MISI is actually an experiment that's been going on for quite a while, um, testing these different materials that could be used in spacecraft and other items uh, to that really harsh environment of outer space as it's kept outside in the vacuum exposed to ultraviolet radiation, uh, extreme temperature swings and the um, micrometeoroids, all of everything that comes with being in that low earth orbit environment um, and some of these materials also on board. Uh, previous MISI experiments typically required um, some hands-on interaction from spacewalking astronauts to change out. They essentially look like trays um, of materials, but this one will be able to be manipulated robotically 
uh, trading out payloads for this long-term platform. And then the second uh, external payload, which we alluded to a little bit earlier, known as ASIM, the Atmosphere Space Interactions Monitor, but a much more fun name, uh, the Space Storm Hunter, uh, coming out of the European Space Agency, also riding up in the trunk. It's actually going to be looking at a special kind of lightning, lightning that takes place in the very upper reaches of our atmosphere. Um, this very high atmospheric lightning, also known as transient luminous events, uh, occurs way be, uh, beyond and above the altitudes of normal lightning and storm clouds. Um, they often show up as uh, something called sprites, so basically tiny little bright flashes um, that can be seen in some photographs and even video sometimes uh, from low Earth orbit. And, and uh, the ASIM. Uh, going to be studying these events um, from the platform. It's going to be attached to the uh, outside of the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory. Um, it's going to be providing uh, the most comprehensive global look at these uh, transient luminous events, um, again, in that region of the very upper atmosphere. Um, typically happening uh, within or even very far above severe thunderstorms. It's going to help provide scientists some of the basic understanding of the physics and how they relate to just the the normal lightning uh, happening much lower beneath it. Um, also looking at quantifying the effects of gravity waves on a section of our atmosphere known as the mesosphere, um, studying some high altitude cloud formation, and also uh, determining uh, the different characteristics of thunderstorms um, that make them so effective at uh, perturbing or uh, altering, disturbing uh, the high altitude atmosphere. Um, any better understanding of this just eventually leads to improving atmospheric models, something um, that plays a very prevalent role in pretty much every facet of our lives from just uh, weather reporting to um, flight planning, things of that nature, um, and then predictions related to climatology, meteorology, all of that. So this uh, very exciting Earth observation payload, one of many being housed and hosted on board the orbiting laboratory just a few hundred miles over the Earth's surface, riding up in Dragon's trunk today. Four forty nine AM Central Time. We are at that thirty meter hold point, so as you can see Dragon still getting closer and closer. This is actually a view from a camera right on the end of the space station's robotic arm. The uh, stuff you're seeing at the bottom of your screen is actually the very end of the latching end effector. It's essentially the hand of the robotic arm that's going to be used to reach out and capture Dragon. Uh, so Dragon uh, flying uh, using LIDAR, uh, light range, and uh, radar is now at this 30 meter hole point. It's going to stay here for a little while, eventually departing after all the uh, checks are done, uh, the vehicle systems in good health, uh, ready to approach that capture point, which is about 10 meters or so away from the International Space Station. And once it uh, departs, it'll continue to fly in, get a little bit closer, and it'll get to that capture point, and that's where it will stay 
and it'll hover in at that capture point. The crew on board will get the go to reach out with the robotic arm. And then uh, the, the lead for today's capture, Norishige Kanai from Japan, will command the arm to reach out, grab the dragon out of the air, and it'll be one step closer to being attached to the International Space Station. Station Houston on space to ground two for Dragon Approach. And Houston Station on two, uh, we're listening. All right, Dragon is at the 30 meter hold point. Uh, we're performing our assessments on the ground and we'll let you know shortly when you are go to proceed with step four and 1.102. Okay, copy that. From our perspective, everything looks really good up here. Excellent, that's good to hear. All right, and as you just heard, the Capcom today, Andreas Mogensen from the European Space Agency, radio up to the crew, Dragon holding at this 30-meter point, doing the checkouts now on the ground uh, here in Houston and also out at Hawthorne, where the SpaceX team overseeing uh, all of the operations for Dragon since its successful launch on Monday. So Dragon will continue to hold here. Once everything's checked out and confirmed to go, uh, they'll be able to... Uh, begin their approach into the capture point, at which point um, the crew on board, the Expedition 55 crew member standing by in the cupola, will use the space station's robotic arm to reach out and grapple Dragon. And again, just a reminder of the voices you're probably going to hear the majority of today uh, from on board the space station. Uh, the crew member backing up, uh, Kanai Scott Tingle, the NASA astronaut. Um, and you'll you'll hear him quite a bit. You'll hear him refer to as either Scott or Maker, uh, his call sign. And then down here on the ground in mission control is Andreas Mogensen this morning. Uh, Mogensen's been at the space station himself. Uh, he launched back in uh, September of 2015 uh, during the year in space. Uh, Scott Kelly, Mikhail Kornienko's year-long stay on board the International Space Station. Uh, he spent about nine days and 20 hours in space, launching along with Sergei Volkov and the Soyuz that eventually brought uh, Scott Kelly and uh, Mikhail Kornienko home, uh, working on a number of different uh, experiments for the European Space Agency during his time. Uh, he was the first Danish astronaut on board. And you can see some of his uh, degrees there, first Danish astronaut selected by the European Space Agency back in 2009. Uh, 30.7. The uh, secondary range is uh, 30.9. And the uh, the CCP is as published. Copy all. Thank you.
and this is Mission Control Houston. We're again continuing to hold at this 30, 30 meter point. Dragon uh, just staying put while the teams here on the ground conduct a series of checks on the spacecraft systems, make sure it's ready to go to a, its final approach where it will get to the capture point. And once it arrives there, the crew members on board Norishige Kanai Prime at the controls, backed up by NASA astronaut Scott Tingle, will reach out with the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm, which we're getting a view right at the end from uh, right here looking down at Dragon, reach out and grapple the spacecraft. Uh, as you can see, it is still nighttime. The sun should come up at about 5.14 a.m. Central Time, 6.14 a.m. Eastern. We'll get some more light on Dragon uh, and the robotic arm in the station itself. Uh, so everything continuing to look good. Uh, we're actually about 20 minutes ahead of the timeline. The capture was originally scheduled for about 6 a.m. Central, uh, but due to the way the burns worked out uh, in Dragon's uh, roughly two-day flight to the International Space Station, uh, did arrive about 20 minutes ahead of schedule. So things looking great so far this morning. We'll continue to stand by at 30 meters and then uh, stand by for that uh, go for the departure. And eventually it'll get to that capture point and we'll be in business ready to capture a dragon. And this is Mission Control Houston, top of the hour. Dragon still holding at 30 meters. We should get a go, no go for it to depart within the next four to five minutes or so, at which point it will leave where it's been sitting, doing these checkouts and making sure it's ready to do its final approach to that capture point. So we'll continue to stand by. We're anticipating Dragon to be captured in just under 39 minutes as they did get a little bit ahead of schedule this morning. The capture targeted to come right around 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern, 3.40 a.m. for our friends over on the West Coast, including those at Hawthorne, uh, where SpaceX and their Mission Control Center has overseen Dragon throughout all of its phases of flight since that launch back on Monday afternoon uh, to where it now sits. So again, getting closer to that capture, we'll continue, continue to stand by and we'll get some movement out of Dragon uh, in the next couple of minutes as it continues to close in on the International Space Station.
Houston Station, SSRMS is in a high hover position. Copy, thank you. All right, well, some activity about to pick up here in Mission Control. The flight director is getting ready to pull the team uh, here in Houston and also getting input from the team out on Hawthorne at a go-no-go no go for Dragon to depart this 30-meter hold point where it's been for the last couple of minutes. Once the team looks over all of the data points and confirms Dragon is in a good configuration, they'll give the go and Dragon will begin to close in a little bit closer to the International Space Station. Next major uh, milestone will be when it gets to that capture point, so space about 10 meters away from the International Space Station, at which point it will hold one more time, and then uh, it'll be over to the crew on board the International Space Station, Norishige Kanai Prime at the robotics controls inside of the station's cupola, backed up by NASA's Scott Tingle, and they'll get the go to reach out with Canada Arm 2, the robotic arm, which we're getting a view from the business end right here, and one of the latching end effectors to reach out and grapple Dragon and bring it one step closer to being attached to the International Space Station, 5,800 pounds of cargo in tow. And Houston Station, crew is ready for Dragon Approach to Capture Point. And if you could uh, give me an estimated time on when you think we might uh, we might do that. I know we're a little bit early. We copy that you guys are ready, and uh, I'll get you a second or a time to second. And a short handover between communication satellites. We should get that video back momentarily. Once we do, we'll see Dragon still about 30 meters away. The team's again polling now, talking to the crew. We estimate at about 1040. Okay, copy that. Uh, we will uh, nom nominal uh, timeline and uh, we will uh, stand by. And as you just heard, the Capcom Andreas Mogensen radio up to the crew. The capture time right now targeted 1040, that's GMT, uh, the space station and all the various control centers running off of GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, the unifying time for the teams uh, cooperating all around the world to support operations on board the station. Station Houston on Space Ground 2, Dragon is now ready to proceed to the capture point. You can expect approach to resume shortly. Send copies. Andreas Mogensen with the call there. Everything go now for Dragon to depart 30 meters. It's going to begin closing in on that capture point momentarily. So we'll start to see Dragon continue to make its way very deliberately a little bit closer where you can see Canada Arm 2, the robotic arm, poised and ready to grapple the vehicle once it arrives at that capture point. But again, everything looking great with the vehicle, everything checked out with the arm, everything Ahead of schedule and on track for a capture about 5.40 a.m. Central, 6.40 a.m. Eastern, 10.40 GMT. 
Station Houston on Space Ground 2, Dragon has now begun approach from 30 meters, and you are go to monitor per step 5 in 1.102. The step 5, 1.102, one So once again, Dragon in motion, departing that 30 meter point. It's going to continue to inch its way up the R bar. That's the imaginary line between the bottom part of the space station and the Earth's surface below, which it's been approaching uh, for the last uh, hour or so. It's going to get into about 10 meters away, at which point it's going to stop and it will be at the capture point. That's the, the final milestone for Dragon's free flight to the space station, at which point the robotic arm will reach out and grapple with the vehicle, moving it one step closer to being attached to the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module. Still dark out, but we are getting closer to an orbital sunrise, just a little under three minutes away. We should start seeing some sunlight uh, on Dragon and the station and the Earth's surface lighting up below as the station right now over the southern Pacific Ocean. It's actually just about to make a pass over the southern part of Chile and Argentina, eventually crossing the Terminator line, that line between night and day over the Earth's surface that you can see in this ground track here. Uh, Dragon right on top of uh, the International Space Station right now, a little less than 30 meters away and closing. And Houston Station on two, OEC primary range at uh, 27 decimal three meters with a uh, closing range rate of 0 0.017. On monitor one, we see the circle is uh, four diameters uh, forward, two diameters to the starboard. The vehicle outline is around the vehicle and the light is within the circle. On monitor three, we have uh, the circle is uh, two, let's say three uh, diameters forward, two diameters to the starboard, and the outline is uh, matching the vehicle, and the uh, light is inside the circle. Excellent, we copy all, that's a nominal report. Mogan's in radioing it up, a nominal report, so everything looking normal, Dragon flying right down the middle, everything looking great with the vehicle as it begins this final approach towards that capture point. and another momentary handover um, between communications. Uh, so we'll get that video back again of Dragon in just a little bit as it continues that approach towards the capture point inside of 30 meters. Expected capture just under 28 minutes from now. So again, kind of similar to uh, when it arrived at that 30 meter point, it'll get to the capture point and hold. Uh, all the vehicle systems will be checked. Once they're confirmed, the crew will get the go to begin inching the robotic arm out to grapple with the Dragon vehicle. And that, again, expected to come at about 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern.
And if you look towards the bottom of your screen, you can see light just beginning to peek its head over the Earth's horizon as we are in that sunrise now, dragon now illuminated by the sun and not just the lights uh, on board. Getting closer and closer to that robotic arm, which is going to reach out and capture it in just about 26 minutes from now. Everything's still looking great with the vehicle for 5,800 pounds of cargo inching closer to the International Space Station. And also at this point, it's actually the open of the prime window for capture. So this would be uh, the earliest go of Dragon. We're already at the capture point. This would be the earliest possible point that the crew would have been given the go to capture the vehicle. This window remains open until about 6.32 uh, a.m. Central Time, 7.32 a.m. Eastern, uh, a little while after sunset. And again, this is just the prime window. So should any issue uh, with the robotic arm or the spacecraft arise during that capture. There are backup opportunities, but so far everything looking great uh, this morning, not tracking any issues with the arm or the spacecraft. This Dragon is uh, honing in on that capture point. It'll be about 10 meters or so away from the space station. It'll hold, it'll do all of those checkouts again, make sure the spacecraft systems are healthy before giving the go to the crew on board. Expedition 55 flight engineer uh, Norishige Kanai from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency primed for capture at the controls in the cupola this morning. He's backed up by Scott Tingle, a NASA astronaut whose voice you'll hear uh, on the loops on the space to grounds uh, quite a bit talking uh, to the Capcom down here in Houston, uh, ESA astronaut Andreas Mogensen. So again, getting a little bit closer now, we should be at that capture point. Uh, in a little under or a little over eight minutes or so. And we'll continue to stand by uh, for updates uh, from the teams as Dragon closes in. The outline matches the vehicle size perfectly and the light is inside the circle. On monitor three, we have the circle uh, two diameters forward, one diameter starboard. The outline matches the vehicle and the light is inside the circle. Copy all, thank you. And this is a view actually of one of the monitors at the robotics workstation that the crew members are using to monitor Dragon on its approach. You just heard Scott Tingle call out a couple of data points as uh, they are tracking Dragon uh, with the Earth uh, coming fully into view, the sun now up, Dragon inching closer to that capture point. It'll be there in just a couple of minutes from now, at which point it'll hold and we'll see the arm get into motion, the crew uh, jumping in to reach out and grapple the vehicle.
the Dragon spacecraft starting to come fully into view and one of the high definition external cameras on the space station. You can actually see the grapple fixture, so the part that the robotic arm is going to attach to. Um, at the very top of your screen, it's the darker colored section with that little tri-point area. That's where the robotic arm will hone in on and actually grapple. And then a series of snares will uh, engage and then the, the arm will essentially have the vehicle. It's kind of reaching out and grasping it with its hand. All of that's going to be controlled by the crew on board. Norshige can I prime at the controls. Once the vehicle is grappled, uh, they'll actually hand over control uh, to the robotic controllers down on the ground, uh, who will maneuver Dragon over the next hour and a half or so to where it will ultimately be attached on the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module, at which point they'll be able to uh, pressurize what's known as the vestibule, the area between Dragon and the International Space Station itself, with the crew ultimately opening up the hatch and beginning the process of unloading all of the cargo and executing the science on board. It's over 2,000 pounds of experiments just in the pressurized compartment alone. Houston Station on two for Dragon. Range now is uh, just under 50 meters. On monitor one, the circle is one radius forward, one radius starboard. The outline is matching the uh, vehicle outline, and uh, the light is inside the circle. The same for monitor three. Copy all. Thank you. And once again, NASA astronaut Scott Tingle calling out a few more data points on Dragon while it approaches. The team here in Houston confirming everything's still looking good. Andreas Mugginson calling that back up to the crew. We should be at the capture point in the next two to three minutes from now, at which point Dragon will once again hold. It'll go into a free drift state, uh, basically just hovering just outside of reach uh, of the robotic arm. And then it'll be time for Expedition 55 crew member Norshi Kanai to command the arm, push it forward and grapple with the Dragon vehicle, capture it from uh, free floating space, and then get it ready uh, to eventually get attached to the space station. So all the milestones ticking off pretty quickly now. Um, we are still about 20 minutes ahead of the original timeline. So again, the capture is targeted for, to come in just about 17 minutes at around 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern.
Station Houston on space to ground two for Dragon Approach. You have a go to confirm capture point hold for step six in 1.102. Copy that. Step six and work. Thank you, Andy. And we confirm we are in uh, mode E hold. Pry range is 10.76. Secondary range is uh, 10.79. Primary range rate uh, 0 0.002. And the CCP configuration is as published. Copy all. Thank you. All right. Well, as you just heard, Dragon now at that capture point. So with it at that milestone, why don't we check in real quick with the team over at Hawthorne, get an update on Dragon and the systems from SpaceX's Kate Tice, who's standing by. Kate? Hey, everyone. My name is Kate Tice, and I'm a certification engineer here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's about... 3.30 a.m. Pacific time, so most of our employees are home sleeping, but most of our Dragon operation team can be seen behind me in our mission control center. The team on console is relatively small, and that's actually by design. The Dragon spacecraft is highly autonomous, which means it's essentially flying itself to the International Space Station. The primary function of the operators in our mission control room is to monitor Dragon's approach to ensure it's performing as expected. They keep a close eye on propellant levels and power on board the spacecraft to ensure Dragon has enough resources to not only arrive at station safely, but also return to Earth once its stay at the station is complete. In addition, Dragon has onboard software that monitors its performance to take automatic action to stay safe if any major anomalies occur that would prevent it from completing its approach. In fact, mission operators send only a few commands to Dragon in a nominal approach, primarily to have Dragon resume after it holds its pre-planned points close to station. Dragon automatically holds at 250 meters, 30 meters, and the capture point at 10 meters, which is what you just saw a couple moments ago. These holds serve as checkpoints to ensure Dragon looks good and to make sure SpaceX, JSC, and the astronauts on board the ISS stay coordinated. With Dragon successfully at the capture point, it will continue to fire its thrusters in order to hold position relative to the space station as the astronauts prepare to reach out and grapple or capture Dragon with the Canada arm. Just before the arm is ready to grapple Dragon, astronauts on board will send a command to Dragon to enter into free drift, where Dragon will shut down its thrusters and allow itself to be captured by the Canada arm. We're just minutes away from getting the go for capture, so with that, we'll kick it back to Dan over at JSC Mission Control in Houston. All right, well, thank you very much, Kate, and to the team out at Hawthorne for being up so early uh, with us this morning uh, out on the West Coast there. Everything is looking great with Dragon, and we are at that capture point. So the next big milestone we'll get to see Canada Arm 2 in motion now is the Dragon's pretty much going to stay where it is. And now it's time for that robotic arm to start moving. So uh, as Kate just explained, they're going to do a couple of checks now, make sure all of the teams are in sync. And then the crew on board, Norshi Akanai, prime at the controls, and Scott Tingle backing him up. We'll get the go to reach out with Canada Arm 2. We'll see it uh, move in to that grapple fixture on Dragon, uh, grapple with the vehicle, um, get it firmly in its grasp, and then Dragon will be one step closer to being attached to the International Space Station. Uh, capture conditions confirmed, and the crew's ready for Dragon capture. Excellent. That's good news. Stand by for capture. And so now one more time, the flight director Rick Henfling here in Mission Control just doing a go, no-go pull uh, for all of the different console positions, making sure that they are ready, all their systems looking good, and uh, the crew can get the go to get Dragon. He's also going to confer with the team out in Hawthorne, who are overseeing Dragon and all of its systems, getting uh, their final go. And then it'll be time for the crew to jump into action, reach out with the Canada Arm 2, and grab themselves a Dragon. Station Houston on space to ground two for Dragon Capture. You have a go for capture sequence. Please perform step four in 1.110 Dragon Capture. And please begin monitoring the back away cue card. 
and Houston Station uh, copies. We got the cue card up and in, in, in sight, and we're going to put step four in work and copy a go for capture sequence. Thank you. And with that, the crew given the go to begin working the steps to capture Dragon. And now it'll be time for Kanai and Tingle to start working through the steps. Uh, they've been doing some onboard robotics training over the last week or so. And they'll be able to reach out now with the robotic arm, Canada Arm 2, and grapple the Dragon. So in just a, a couple of moments, we'll begin to see uh, the robotic arm start to move. This process typically takes about eight minutes or so to go from getting that go to actually capturing Dragon. So we'll continue to follow along uh, the station and Dragon right now flying over the southern Atlantic Ocean, about to make a cross over the southern part of the continent of Africa. Uh, but for now, we are just a few minutes away. The capture anticipated to come right around 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern. But we'll uh, see what the exact time is. They are still about 20 minutes ahead of uh, the planned schedule, so everything going very great uh, so far this morning. And we are just moments away from capturing a dragon. Two hundred and fifty five statute miles beneath Dragon, you can see the southern part of the Atlantic beginning to end and the southern part of Africa coming into view. The station and Dragon are about to cross right over the top of Namibia and begin to pass uh, over the southern and central parts of Africa. Again, we are just a few minutes away from capture. Should see the arm in motion momentarily.
and we are continuing to stand by. The crew was given the go to capture Dragon, so they're running through their checklist now. Uh, pretty soon, Kanai will begin to send commands to the robotic arm. They begin moving it out. Dragon holding just about 10 meters away from station. It did arrive successfully at the capture point. Uh, and so we'll see activity pick up pretty soon. The crew will call down uh, and we'll hear when the robotic arm is in motion and we'll stand by for an exact capture time. And as you can see from the video here, this actually a view right at the end of the robotic arm. The arm is in motion, so it's now going to slowly move its way out. Uh, this is actually a view from one of the latching end effectors, essentially the hand on the robotic arm, and it's going to grapple with that gray fixture right in the middle of your screen with that little tri-point uh, fixture. And at this point, Norishige Kanai slowly driving the cannon arm to end towards the Dragon spacecraft, using its thrusters to maintain that free drift right outside of the station. And we are just moments away from capture. arm right now just about four meters away. Three meters in closing. Two meters to go. Dragon now in free drift. Less than a meter to go. Everything looking good, the arm well aligned with Dragon. Standing by for capture confirmed. And as you can see in this view, we have capture confirmed. Capture coming almost right on time, 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern. While well, the station was flying over the southern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So with that, Dragon captured the 14th resupply mission from SpaceX in the grasp of Canada Arm 2 and the crew of Expedition 55. One step closer to being attached to the station, but a very successful capture this morning. So with Dragon captured, we'll stand by for a moment uh, and wait to hear from the crew on board. Norshige Kanai Prime at the controls today. 
uh, responsible for reaching out with the robotic arm and capturing Dragon this morning. But again, Dragon captured successfully. The capsule grasped by the Canada Arm 2 at 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern. Houston station switch ground two for Dragon capture complete. Go for post capture reconfiguration. I don't think it gets any better than that. Excellent job, everyone. That was uh, really nice and smooth. Nice job to the uh, to the folks on the ground as well. Everything went uh, very smooth uh, from our perspective. And now the Dragon within the grasp of the crew of Expedition 55 snagged successfully by that uh, Canada Arm 2 as we continue to get a picture perfect look at the vehicle uh, attached now to the end of that robotic arm. Why don't we go out to SpaceX and Hawthorne one more time uh, where once again SpaceX's Kate Tice is standing by. Kate. Thanks, Dan, and thanks to Kanai and the other astronauts on board the space station for your role in welcoming Dragon to the ISS. This is the 14th visit a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft has made to the orbiting laboratory, and I can tell you it never gets old. Personally, I love looking for the ISS in the night sky, and it's always an added bonus when Dragon is chasing the station because it too is visible from Earth with the naked eye. The video always makes it look easy, but keep in mind that when the arm reaches out, both the space station and the Dragon spacecraft are orbiting the Earth at 27,000 kilometers an hour, or nearly 17,000 miles per hour. If you tuned in for Monday's launch of this mission, you probably heard us talk about this being the second visit to the ISS for this particular Dragon spacecraft. The first was back in April 2017 as part of the CRS-8 mission. The capture of Dragon today marks the beginning of what is expected to be this Dragon's second month-long stay at the International Space Station. A previously flown Falcon 9 boosted this Dragon to orbit less than 48 hours ago, and in just a few hours, Dragon will berth or connect to the space station, delivering 5,800 pounds of supplies for the astronauts, as well as some great science ranging from anti-cancer therapeutics to technologies designed to remove debris in low Earth orbit. On the SpaceX side, our team will continue to monitor Dragon's activities during its stay at the station. 
We look forward to bringing back about 1,700 kilograms or nearly 3,800 pounds of science and research when Dragon returns to Earth, which is currently targeted for May 2nd. Thanks again to NASA and all the International Space Station partners. This has been a great mission so far, and we look forward to seeing Dragon birth to the station within the next few hours. Back to you, Dan. And thank you, Kate, and thanks once again to the team out at SpaceX there. We've been overseeing Dragon since its successful launch on Monday and its uh, flawless flight up to orbit, where it is now grasped successfully by the Canada Arm 2, just a few hours away from being attached once again to the International Space Station. This is this capsule, as you just heard Kate describe, uh, this capsule's second trip to the International Space Station, uh, its first one uh, coming back on the uh, company's eighth resupply mission. Uh, back in May of 2016. Uh, but with Dragon now grappled, control going to be handed over from the crew on board to the robotics controllers back down here on planet Earth, where they're going to be sending commands uh, over the next couple of hours to the vehicle, ultimately uh, maneuvering it to its berthing port or where it's going to be attached to the space station on the um, port on the Earth facing side of the Harmony module, also known as Node 2. But again, that successful grapple coming um, just a few moments ago at 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, while the station and Dragon flew just over the southern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So as I just described, berthing the next step for Dragon as it's going to get maneuvered into place. We're going to go ahead and break away from our coverage while that uh, gets done. Uh, the robotics controller here in Houston working with his counterparts to maneuver the Dragon. So we'll be back on the air live here on NASA TV coming up at 7.30 a.m. Central Time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and also live on the web on uh, Facebook.com slash ISS and on the NASA website. Uh, we will come on just before Dragon gets attached and bolted into place on the Earth-facing side of Harmony. Um, that should happen sometime after that 7.30 show start time, and we'll be monitoring along with the team here in Mission Control Houston and giving you updates as they come through. So again, a very successful flight uh, to the station for the SpaceX Dragon, now grappled, soon to be berthed. All of this cargo will soon be offloaded by the Expedition 55 crew. And once they get the hatch open, they have 5,800 pounds of cargo being delivered, 3,800 roughly of that inside the capsule, and another 2,000 taking the form of science experiments in Dragon's trunk. But with that successful grapple, we will go ahead and break away, join us back in just a little while to see Dragon get attached and then it'll begin its month-long stay at the International Space Station. So we'll see you back here soon. With that, we'll go ahead and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.